100 mistakes. So what's going on here? What's going on here? Messiah. What's going on? Yeah. I'm just telling this. Your, your, your flies are undone, by the way. Mr. Oh, Paul wait, here. Uh, are they? What's he trying to do? Mr. <laughs> Paul here. <laughs> I mean, I mean, who's I be never heard that, next to him. that Jesus' he's, first he's name is Lord. He's cocked and ready. He cool. believes in cool. Jesus. Who doesn't know? Who doesn't know? He believes in Jesus Christ, but ah, 700 okay. times in the, in the scriptures, he's referred to as Lord Jesus Christ, which is kurios Adonai. But he is in denial as he is about a number of things. But he, he would say, no, God made 700 mistakes about the first name of the Messiah in the script. That's a big mistake of God. What a silly God. Seven, not 70, 700 times. The Bible says, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and whoever calls upon the name of the Lord. It's always kurios in Greek. Sorry, but believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and what? And you will be saved. And that's a quote from where? Acts. Bible. Chapter 16, 31. Thank you. Have you read it? A man came to Jesus and says, good teacher, what must I do to be saved? Yes. What was Jesus' answer? Well, do you understand the old covenant and the new covenant? What was Jesus' Do you understand answer? the messianic the age? What was Jesus' answer? Messi You've got to understand the old covenant so and the new covenant. The He's you won't answer the question. He's confused. answer the question. I'll tell you what Jesus' He's answer confused. was. He's still under the old covenant, the Messiah, the Holy Spirit. No, he hadn't really died. Not under the old covenant. Come back you, from the. Are you under the old covenant? I, I'm under lots of things you don't want to know about, Jeff. Wow. Um, so, delusions. Can, can, can we try this again? Hey. You rightly quoted from Acts uh, 16 or 17, where it does say. Well, 17. 17, thank you. He's rightly, no, it's 16, so he's got it wrong. He thinks he knows a lot of stuff. He's just righteously saying it's 17, it's actually 16. He makes out that he knows a lot of stuff. There's a classic example of someone who thinks he knows the Bible but is doesn't. Carry on. Okay. I was actually trying to just summarize what you had yourself said. Yes. Uh, in Acts 16 or 17, uh, do you want to correct me again and embarrass me again? By, because it really is important that you trip me up on this really important point. Well, you're being point, very so. condescending and so, saying um, you know more than I do. So, so I know, I'm just because, 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 because I know more than you. Can, can I speak? Because you, you, you've done 90% of the talking. So in Acts, it says, uh, I think it's to, in the... Uh, <laughs> the, the, the Philippi jailer who says to Paul and Silas something like that uh, what must I do to be saved and Paul says as you rightly say uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved absolutely that's what that passage says I then went uh, and asked you what Jesus according to your own Bible said in answer to exactly the same question yeah. uh, and, under and, the old uh, covenant uh, and, uh, <laughs> when the Messiah was there yes you've got to understand that Hello, oh, right. okay. and you refuse to answer so far no I know the answer I'm trying to explain to you can you just share you. the Answer. <laughs> you haven't, we haven't even said what the answer is yet. We, we, all you've done is you said, can't you use that? No, no, old covenant. Oh, can't you? Okay. You've not actually said what the answer is. Let's, go down, Let's go down this little route. Let's go down this little route. Okay, so you've got to believe, you've got to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and all your strength. No, that's what, not, what did he say? No. Uh, what did he say? No. I'm talking about the passage uh, is found in, <laughs> in Synoptic Gospels, but well, this one is in Mark chapter 10, <clears> verse. 17, 18, 9, 20. And I actually know it so well, I'll just recite it to you. Because I know, even though I have a very poor knowledge of the Bible, as you correctly pointed out, this one passage I have memorized. A, a, a man comes to Jesus and says, Good teacher, yep. what must I do to be saved? Jesus says, Why do you call me good? There's no one good but God oh, the alone. the first thing he said. Sorry, did you want to contribute something in the middle of my quote? No. And, um, well, it's called a dialogue. I'm not going to listen to you preach. It's called a, you know, we can, we can talk while the other person's talking. You do it all the time. Right. Can I complete the quote now? Go ahead. Right. Don't get upset. It's very helpful what you're saying. So, good to, so a man comes to Jesus and says, good teacher, what yeah. must I do to be saved? Jesus, why do you call me good? Yep. There's no one good but God alone. And Jesus says, obey the commandments. This is what he must do to be saved. Obey the commandments. Yep. The man said, I've obeyed, I've obeyed all those since I was a youth. Yep. Jesus, according to Mark, looked at him, loved him and says, you lack one thing. Yes, he knew it because he's the son Sorry, of God. He I, knew I, what I, he lacked. I, I haven't finished. The what? one who, thing. Who cares? Who cares? Speak I his care. corner. I care. <laughs> I haven't finished my quote. I haven't finished my quote. You haven't finished your preach. You've been preaching for the last 10 minutes. Try and learn how to dialogue. It's I'm a good way of communicating. I'm merely quoting your Bible. So you, did, you just interrupted me. But it's okay. You can do that. Carry on. Oh boy. So, the one, uh, so Jesus asked, uh, said the man lacked one thing. Apart from obeying the commandments, the man lacked one thing to yes. be saved. Yes, yes. And the one thing he was... He wasn't perfect. The one thing, the man was to give all his wealth to the poor, and then he would have treasure in heaven. Yes. So, compare that with the answer that Paul gave to the jailer at Philippi when he said to be saved, you must believe on the Lord Jesus. 
Jesus himself didn't mention believing in Jesus. He said, this believe is where he's confused. Obey, so I'm finished. It's obey called, the I don't commandment. Care. It's called the Old the Covenant and the New Covenant. And then he doesn't he understand what? the Old Covenant. The Messiah comes talking to a Jew. Keep the law, keep the law. In order to go to heaven, you need to be perfect. Why did Jesus bother going so around preaching? So it's the old covenant. Why did Jesus bother? He's the Messiah. Always interrupting me, but that's okay. Go around preaching because he's, but he's a Muslim. giving teaching okay. that you don't follow. Why did Muslim Jesus mean? bother spending a whole year or three years preaching this stuff when you say it's completely out of date and we he's don't follow it anyway? You should believe he's the Messiah. But you don't believe he what he teaches about all salvation. The you reject the what he's. You don't follow what he teaches about salvation. You reject it. Oh, that's old stuff. We don't follow that now. Follow Paul. Oh, what Paul told you, who never met Jesus in his life. Oh, he knows the true gospel. <laughs> what, what, what a stupid okay. thing to say. We don't follow Jesus, we really follow Paul. You follow a different religion than Jesus. That's Jesus' right. own religion, his own faith, his own teaching about salvation, you reject. But you, you do follow... Have no, you I haven't. Oh, but he's still going. Paul. You saw Paul who said, oh, believe in Jesus. Jesus didn't say, believe he in He doesn't me. understand the old covenant, the new covenant. Sorry? Dying, he had to die, he had to rise from the dead. Fine. He's in denial about I, that. I believe it's not possible. He sent the I Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit has come. He doesn't get that because no, he's blind. Boring. No, he thinks everything in the Bible is all just one covenant, but actually it's two covenants. Uh, which is, which is uh, according to most scholars, is a forged, uh, he can't uh, handle the truth. Okay. So I don't believe in forged texts, you're right. Right. But anyway, you do, believe do you have a response? Are you going to follow Paul? I did, are you but you close follow... your ears while I was I was talking to this lady here, I'm sorry. sorry. She, you... she addressed me. She was uh, having a word with me. She was telling me something in your words. defense. And that's fine because I respect her. Aww. Now the question is, are but you, you going to follow me. Paul? <laughs> are you going to Are you going to follow Paul? I don't or are you going to follow, follow Jesus. I follow the Bible. The whole ah. Bible and the old covenant and new but covenant which you do not the understand. Bible there you go interrupting again because you don't like the truth. You the Bible cannot handle that's why you're interrupting. Oh, he's gone tummy. Sorry, interrupting all the time. <laughs> Talking about the old covenant, then we got the messianic age where he fulfilled all the prophecies of the messiah. Your flies are still hanging down. And why don't you get some trousers? That, so I do because they're quite obvious. I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, and then you have, in the book of Acts, which you've probably never read, have you read Acts? Acts? What's that? I've never heard of it. No, it's not read it. Okay, it's, it's written by Luke, it comes after Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. It is Luke. And I've not read this stuff. You know. Here we have the Holy Spirit given Jesus died, come back from the dead, which he's in denial about because he likes to twist things from the Bible and distort things because he doesn't understand the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Now we have the New Covenant, Jeremiah 31, you're, you're 31. Great, you're a great Bible teacher, expositor, you can teach me these things. What did I just say then? But you're going to teach me this. You're closing, you see, he closes his ears. He cannot handle the truth. So he'll try and think of something derogatory and sarcastic. Because he's so blinkered. You're so blinkered. A new covenant, Jeremiah 31, 31, and am I, ma am I making... Can we, can we look at that passage? Jeremiah 31, Okay, I've memorized it, okay. What's it say? I will write it on your heart. A what? new covenant. It's called the new covenant. The Holy Spirit will be giving the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, not the blood of animals, the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. So you Jesus follow the new Christ. covenant, do you? I followed the whole Bible. Now we are under the new covenant where you are saved by believing in the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't because he thinks as a Muslim that God, almighty God who wrote the scriptures, made 700 mistakes about the very name of the Messiah. His name is not Lord Jesus Christ. 700 times he's called that. But he actually believes he, his name is Jesus Christ. He's just the Messiah and his, blo and his name is Isa, but it's actually Yesu. So he's in total denial. He will not accept that he's actually Kurios Adonai the Lord. Happy days, it's his choice. Personally, I believe in the scriptures that Jesus quoted time and time again. People called him Lord. He didn't say, don't call me Lord. He is Lord. So he accepted the fact that he was called Kurios. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. Who quoted that? Matthew 22, 44. Jesus quoted that. He's referring to himself. A bunch of Pharisees like him who were not accepting the truth of Scripture. So he said, what do you think of the Messiah? What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? So they said, well, he's the son of Daud, son of David, of course. He said, why then does David by the Spirit call him Lord? The Lord, the Lord said unto my Lord, Psalm 110, sit at my right hand. If he is a son, how then can he be Lord? Do you know what they said? They said nothing. Why couldn't they say nothing? He cannot answer that because Jesus is referring to himself as Lord at the right hand of the Father. Can I, can I say He's Lord. 
Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. Kurios. Now, can we now no. try and stick to what I just said? I'll stick to what I want to say, thank you very much. Oh, no, ignore no, what no. I just said and just stick to his own agenda. He doesn't want to answer the plain facts of what I've just said. I he do. wants to go uh, off I on actually, a rant. I actually want to address uh, the new covenant, Jeremiah 31. Oh, well, 31. that's good. Go, go ahead. Oh, that's very good. I'm, I'm pleased I'm uh, pleasing you, finally. Now, I don't, believe, I, don't know I don't believe this gentleman at all follows the new covenant. I think, uh, and he misquoted Jeremiah 31, or didn't quote it at all, really. When Jesus, in, in Mark 10, 17, said, what must I do to be saved? Obey the law. It's a very Jewish answer. And that's what you should do in the New Covenant as well. This is what you don't realize. Oh. I'll read it here. In the New Covenant, this is a covenant I will make with the house of Israel in those days. That's the old covenant. I, I, will, I will put, this is the New Covenant. It's a new, I'm reading for the New Covenant. I will put my law within them. This is the Jewish no, law. It's, it's, the 630, excuse me, 613 commandments of the law. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts. Mm. And I will be their God and their people. Now, these commandments. Not on tablets and their heart, the New Covenant, the Holy but Spirit let me ask in you the a heart. Question. You just answered it, buddy. No, 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 That's the new covenant. Do you eat pork out of interest? Yes He's banging or on no. about pork. Yes or no. <laughs> I like seven. a nice bacon Mark sarnie. Seven. Mark Do you yeah, eat pork? Mark seven. Mark you can, see, he's Christian, confused by with the, the old covenant and the new he keeps no, banging no. on about the pigs. This is the new uh, I'll show the cameraman here. This is the new this is the new covenant. I'm reading oh, the yeah. Christian's own Bible here. It says new covenant. In the new covenant according to Jeremiah, the law is still in operation. The Jewish law is still something you have to obey. So when I ask Christians who claim to be under this new covenant, if they obey the new covenant, notice how defensive he gets. Do you eat pork? Do Christians eat pork? Of course they do. They disobey, they disobey the commandments of God. So, look at them, look at them all. Look at them all. Look at them all. Look at them all. Me because we all know the answer. the answer. The same look how time. upset them all. Maybe no, look how upset reading. they are. They are look more bacon look how for us, Paul. Yeah. Yeah. More, more bacon for us. More bacon for you. Yes. As, as the Christian says, more bacon for her. Yes. But the right. new That's covenant that Jeremiah <laughs> speaks of requires <laughs> obedience to the law. It doesn't require the abrogation or abolition of the law. Paul says in Ephesians 2.15 no that, that the law has been abolished. Law. Paul says the law has been abolished. Jeremiah in the prophecy says the law will be uh, it's been fulfilled. followed. It has been fulfilled. Where's it say? I'm you talking know? about for no up. man I'm made by any means of justice. This, is, this is Jeremiah, yeah? No, but no, no, this is the passage he referred to, yeah? But you're supposed to obey the law. What he's saying is misleading and just plain contradictory to the text. It's logical. And Muslims simple, never mislead about it's Christianity. Not and all the truth. <laughs> Old covenant, new covenant. He's missing out on the anyway, bacon sarnies. on this happy note, he's, can he's I just deluded, say, deluded. isn't it great? The on speaker's corner, note, he's the gonna, speaker's corner is now back in action. Lord, and the Christians and the other disagree with them. We're all here still after three three months. Something like feels that. Feels like three years. Feels like three years. Long We're time. finally back. And maybe this is the first conversation debate between us the, uh, between Muslims and Christians that we've had so far. So, yeah, I've, I've, had, I've heard earlier gonna, ones with uh, Muslims. Are you Sunni or Shiite? Th that was filmed. Are you Sunni or Shiite? I'm not going to move on. Let's talk about Islam. We love you. Come back, Paul. Paul, let's talk about the Quran. Paul, Paul, come back. Paul, I'll debate you. Come back. Come back. Paul. Let's speak over. Why is this what? What? No, I, I think Why it's your presence, it? darling. <laughs> <laughs> Me? <laughs> anyway, that was a lovely little snippet of how Speaker's Corner is without the Dawa team, just Paul. <laughs> he's been in and out lately, but he's back in and um, misquoting and misconstruing the Bible from a place I'm sure of, like coming from a good place of trying to bring people to Muhammad and Allah, or Alan, as I like to call him. I don't know if you want to get a wrap up from this guy. Paul well, left his life. He's back. He's back. He, I think it's like a yearly occurrence. Like maybe you get like loyalty points or something. I don't know. Oh, so we go for Thank you. Are we chasing? Are we doing a shamsi? Uh, I don't know. I think then. I think you should stick with me because I love you. I can get. See, Pav. Okay. Love is making Now Pavlov. Now Paul, Paul, he walked away last time too. So I love you, darling. 
29 position of the blood. Who they are? No, I do. No, no. 29 of the blood. Who can help you? I got a nine. No. I got a nine in front of me. Uh, Alcohol, like you say, burns down everyone. Uh, everyone. Yeah. And you know everyone. as well, no care how sensible you are, Alcohol can make you act like a life. You know my point? No, no, no. Alcohol is the worst. Follow me, Pink Pixel, on IG. Yeah, I'm a singer. So like, follow my Instagram, follow my YouTube. Pink Pixel. What the doctor? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't do acapella. Oh, one song. Drugs. Yeah. One song. Go on. Oh. Three little birds. That's the next one. By my doorstep. What the doctor? Sing. What are you doing? It could be with hashish. Good. Like this country one. Alcohol kills 100,000 people here in this country. No, no, no. No, no, madam. Madam, no, no, no. All the drugs is key. Coffee is key. Coca-Cola. You know the express so many years ago. Coca no, no. Yeah, tea because you got <laughs> caffeine. No, caffeine, sugar. madame. Sugar, caffeine, sugar, sugar. he can talk to your blood. Maybe. He can, yeah, yeah. No, no, maybe. The sun, madame. Think, oh, excuse me. Sir, let me talk. Thank you. Time, huh? <laughs> he, he don't like. He like gets his points across. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, I drink thirty <laughs> cups of coffee a day. I'm still standing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Obviously, he's on some alcohol. <laughs> Suck it up, man. It's not cold. I do yeah, like this, this color guy, you, though. This guy, yeah. He likes. He likes. He likes. He likes, likes to make. Oh, and likes to make you think that you're listening. Yeah, he's listening to you, but he's not. Copy how he looks. Chop, chop. What's up, Pablo? How's it going? How's it going, guys? Here you go. Shilling again, as usual. The Devil's Game on Amazon. Okay. Check it out. Free preview. Okay. 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 Pretty much. Because, yeah. Agnostic. Yeah. What's with the what's with the face of disgust? You're an atheist. Like it's not disgust. It's like pretty much. It's not a very definitive. Like I'm pretty much an atheist. It's agnostic. You prefer him to be a Muslim? No, I prefer him to be a So a Jew. Uh, if he works the law very, very consistently without a temple. No, Judaism is the right religion. Right? But there's no temple, so you can't keep the law. It's one of those things where... I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm not Jewish, guys. I'm not Jewish. We know. We know that you're... Well, some people don't. They've been asking me if I'm Jewish because of my son. What's the Judaism? I, I don't know. Like, they've been asking me if I'm a Freemason, if I'm Jewish or whatever. We well, got Freemasonry imagery there. The Freemasonry. I mean, look, I, I'm not sure. Checkerboards, for example. Sure, but the checkerboards can be the symbol of many things, not only Freemasonry. Game, for example. Huh? Written at the bottom of the picture. Yeah, yeah, game, exactly. I use the, the, you know, chess as a game because in chess. Exactly, because in chess each figure has his own. Uh, you know, way of moving. Yes. And just as, like in life, according to people's uh, character, they move in certain ways. You know, they have specific uh, functions. But humans can change and adapt, whereas yes. uh, a rook can't become a bishop. Uh, yeah, but the pawn can become a queen. Yes, and a little, little draft can be kinged at the end and then everyone gets excited. That means the draft, you get to the other side and you get a king, you get a queen. queen. No, no, draft. There is no queen. Draft is just checkers. Like oh, okay, okay, yeah. never, mind, never mind. I thought we were still talking about chess, yeah. I feel human nature can be changed. Like a person, person's nature can be changed over their life. Do you have an example of that? Uh, heroin addicts who become free of their addiction, their, their character changes. When they are heroin addicts, their main or only uh, focus is obtaining money by whatever means, getting the drug, getting the drug into their system, and then repeating and repeating to the point of insanity, institutions. Uh, you know, death basically. Whereas if they are delivered or recovered from that condition, their essential nature is not to even think about heroin at all. It's not to want to rob or to degrade themselves, but to either go onto another substance potentially, which is not a massive change, or to become a recovery worker. So that's one example. Okay. But, but if we remove the chemical influence from it, because heroin is a very powerful drug, but if, if we were to say, a perfectly normal human being who doesn't have an addiction. Do you think that they could experience drastic yes, changes? Yes, I believe 
that a uh, regular law-abiding citizen can, in the right circumstances, change to become a murderer or a thief. Um, it could be a one-off, or, as in the case of rapists, I don't believe they're born as potential rapists. It's like a left wing. I don't believe that. I think that life experiences and a deviant sexual nature and a repressed something or other and a desire for power over weaker people fosters in them the elements conducive to becoming a rapist. But in the first instance, their nature is not that way. As children, I'm pretty sure even Hitler like, wasn't a genocidal child. He, he became, his character changed enough for him to be able to sanction the deaths of millions of people as well. Pretty radical. How do you define character in this case? Because I don't think our definition is very good. Character, the, uh, character, the traits or observable uh, behaviours that traditionally make up the, the personality of the person. So the character of my mother is very gentle, is uh, not very forthright, not aggressive, non aggressive to the extreme, um, quite placid, um, patient, kind. Whereas my uh, character is quite forthright, is quite domineering in certain situations, um, unafraid to voice my opinion. That I have had times in my life when that's been slightly altered, but still it's an innate characteristic, it seems. But I can change. I can come into a relationship with somebody who's much more dominant than me, or so passive as to make me feel like a bully, and then even part-time, my character towards them will change. So, so how do you define character? No, how do I define it? So, so characteristics? Like well, no, no, that's gender? well, that's the thing. It's no. Um, so I would define character as intrinsic properties or patterns of behavior uh, that are expressed more or less consistently throughout a person's life. That would but, make an issue with my well, but they tend to change, though the underlying <laughs> logic is more or less the same. So someone, so so the examples you shared with me all tended to feature some external impetus, like a drug or a partner or a condition. Yes. Whereas the sense that I'm talking about is, okay, someone who is naturally aggressive, for example, and that's an intrinsic aspect of who they are as a person, can express their aggression physically, you know, can become a boxer, or can become a barrister who is not physical at all. Um, so, so, so I have two points to make on yes. that. Mental health. Uh, or mental health issues, which everybody can and potentially does experience in their life, can massively alter the intrinsic character of a person. Otherwise, placid people can become homicidal and then revert to the former characteristic. Also, with, with respect to boxers, that's not necessarily a characteristic. So, 20% of human beings are high dominant, like uh, one in five of all species, actually, and that's a naturally occurring phenomenon if those those 20 uh sorry one in five people don't have a legitimate outlet for their um natural domineering or aggressive like in a legitimate sense tendency so if they don't become politicians or ceos or famous people or some way of legitimately uh expressing that dominance and showing others who and how they they roll then they will take illegitimate means and sometimes they have all of the trappings of wealth and still they become criminal because of the desire to cut corners so they want to exert dominance quickly they want money very quickly or they have like a self-defeating uh, character trait but for sure characteristics are not set in stone otherwise we would not try to rehabilitate criminals we would not and even taking all outside elements which you can't do with a sociable race such as humanity <coughs> excuse me i would suggest that hypnosis brain surgery a, a hit uh, you know hitting on the head years of therapy um a different relationship um uh, feeling love in childhood or not feeling love in childhood being one of a twin or not being like there are so many variables that can and do change the characteristics of human beings coming to christ and being saved radically altered my character i believe that's due to the indwelling of the holy spirit but i know for a fact that in and of myself i am not peaceful patient kind loving gentle i'm just not i'm quite judgmental and like a bit snarky and i, I quite enjoy people being uncomfortable
like I'm not that nice, but through salvation or through Christ, I don't have to do it myself. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit conforms me. I don't, I can't produce those qualities of character that I don't possess in the first place. So I definitely believe in characteristics can and do, can permanently change or can temporarily change to fit. You know, if we were in a plane crash, our characters would change radically if we were, you know, forced into some sort of subsistence or something like that. Thanks. Thank you, Kate. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you. Thank you. We'll wrap up there, Kate. What happened there? Okay, so we were talking about inherent characteristics or intrinsic characteristics and I guess that, yeah, I believe that the most uh, visible and palpable example of a change of character comes with the presence of the Holy Spirit through the salvation um, that Christ offers as a free gift. I would ask anybody watching the video who hasn't fallen asleep yet to look at your own character, be honest with yourself and, and see how your mind and your heart is turned pretty much against people and is all about self. And then think of the sacrifice that Christ himself gave for all of us that we don't need to you know be judged by any of the wicked and evil or hateful thoughts that we all possess like when we're tired hungry angry lonely um hard done by people. and i would offer all of you uh, the promise of christ that if you repent believe in your heart confess with your mouth um be born again and eventually baptized you will receive the free gift of salvation which is uh, to everybody and god bless everybody and i'm so happy jc's back <laughs> Thank you. I have my own reasons, and this is a, this is a very common view indeed. I think the historical Jesus is most like the Gospel of Matthew. Because we know from other evidences, which we can go into if I'm sure you don't want to go, you know, that Jesus was a Torah of the Lord and did not teach the abolition of the law in part or in part. So, 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 so this is not an arbitrary, this is a, a very sophisticated why, academic analysis. So when you, you effing come out with this, you insult, you insult me, you insult me, and you insult scholarship. You insult me, and you insult me. No, you don't realise it, because you don't, I, I give you that, you don't realise what you're doing, but you insult uh, scholarship, which is mostly by Christians, and you insult me. When you come out with these frivolous, ignorant statements like that, it's, it's Paul, insulting. Paul, 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 let's get to the top. Oh, no, let's get to the top. Let's get to the top. Paul, your whole entire argument is based on the same. The whole entire argument is based upon a local fallacy. It's an arbitrary. Let him talk now. Why are you afraid to let me speak? Why are you afraid to let me speak? Because I've walked away from me twice. Yeah, actually have the conversation. I don't want to talk to you. So because I'm you're going back against you, you don't like what I'm saying. So I'm unpleasant by pointing out your logical fallacies. You yeah, appeal because, to authority. Because usually you, no, you're you using, in, in the paradigm that you're speaking, no, one second, no, in the paradigm that you're speaking, Paul, as you, you cannot appeal to authority, authority well, to make a claim. I can, I can you, can't, what I want. you cannot say, these scholars say this, therefore it's true. Because I can bring you up a scholar that says Muhammad never existed. I, I, you will never I, I, accept I, I, it. The there's a scholar in Germany that says the Quran was never written in Arabic. If you look at the Gospels, we can all appeal to authority. We have to deal with what's this actually is not being said. This is you have an arbitrary picking of what you believe and what, what you won't believe so this, based upon the Quran. He's got this silly argument that he wheels out all the time, which is irrelevant. Well, we, no, we, it's not relevant. We, we, you're when, you're when appealing to authority. Can, can I ask you your view? You always look, look at them in their whole and how they relate to each other. So, can, can you? I, I know what I say. If you're not familiar with this, I don't think I just. If you're not, it can be a lot to take. And Q itself, that's just a book of quotes. Great. So you're off. So I'm not going to scrap that point. What do you think of what I just said? I'm not going to tune for you anymore. Because you, if you know what Q means, then you. I think you've got a point, but you've, you've ignored Galatians three. You've, you've ignored the teacher that Paul, who's, who's obviously a disciple. Oh, what's his name? Uh, you got his name? Jesus. Sorry. Yeah, Jesus. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm talking about who was in Paul. Who was he? Uh, mental. Well, no, Paul, Paul was Paul's converted in the road to Damascus. In yeah, yeah, yeah. Galatians chapter one and says then, he wasn't mentored by the apostles. Uh, he went into both. I mean, he went into um, yeah. James and John. Yeah. He went into Arabia, yeah. and then afterwards he actually went up to Jerusalem so, to, to see what he was preaching. You see, I, I wasn't mentioning Paul because what I was trying to do is to let Matthew speak on his own terms for himself. I, I, at this stage, I, I want to hear because the problem with what Christians do because they harmonise everything, they let the powerful, powerful voices like Paul, who's virtually half. New Testament 
is by Paul. Uh, is that bigger voice given to him in the Testament? I'm trying to say, let Matthew's Jesus speak. What does Matthew's Jesus teach about the law? And he says Torah observance. Mark's Jesus doesn't. He says, as you, you know, in parentheses, in brackets, thus he declared all. So there's a difference. Well, we know that the earliest, the earliest copies were actually found in Mark. So the can, I make, copies, can I make one point? The earliest copies of the Bible. Really? Oh, I'd, I'd rather talk to him. Yeah, that's because you don't like to address what I'm saying. That's why you, you walk away from it twice. Oh, you, you, let, let, me say, you let me say one thing. Well, you're saying, no, one second. Say. Paul, so, so, you're saying. Did you not see that he's a Torah observant Jew in, in, in Matthew? Yeah, I, I'm not stopping you from making a point. Paul, okay, I'm, <laughs> just, I'm asking you to. You're, you're afraid to address the argument. I am. I okay, am. then let me ask you this. You afraid if, it, if you want to simply take, psychological if you want, you're it, Paul, 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 then answer the question. No, I'm not. Because I'm talking okay, to him. Okay, so you're okay to debate the Christian over there. You're okay to debate because uh, he's, a, he's a nice person. But you won't discuss he's a nice person. I'm trying to address the argument. You're the one attacking me. And let me say this. You want to take Matthew. You see the point. You want to take Matthew, Paul. For what he says, you're saying we shouldn't. We shouldn't separate Matthew from everyone else we should take what yeah. Matthew says but, but so in, again it goes back to my Mark, point you are arbitrarily picking and choosing what you like said, uh, because you were saying I, Matthew uh, says this I, I agree with this but, but when Matthew says Christ was crucified yeah. you then you the arbitrarily discard so, that which is more like so it's based on the Jesus. arbitrary but picking and choosing of what scriptures you like you are picking and choosing scriptures I'm not, I'm not sorry with Ben I'm, I'm listening to what you're saying yeah. but it does sound like you are picking and choosing and why is that wrong why is the methodology from a historian's point of view remember I'm talking about being a Muslim or a Christian just from a historical point of view, just, just looking at texts and trying to understand them, why is that approach wrong? It's wrong because, because no, I, no, I wasn't asking it, it, It's wrong because it's arbitrary it, at its very core. You're it's saying, it's you're saying, in the world. Paul, Paul, appeal to authority, logical fallacy. No, it's not oh. logical fallacy. It's not logical fallacy. Why is it a logical fallacy? Because when you're talking about the paradigms we're speaking about, you can't yeah. say these scholars say this, therefore it's true. Can, can you That's a logical fallacy. Uh, now, if we're, we're going to take Matthew, as Paul says, on its own, then we should take what Matthew says in his entire Entirety. Yeah. He yeah. arbitrarily yeah. picks and chooses what in Matthew, Matthew he likes. He, he, he agrees with Matthew in some points. Yeah. When Matthew says Jesus was crucified and he rose again, yeah. that's not historical. So but the bits that I agree with are historical. What did he mean, Jesus, to be? Who was Jesus for Matthew? Why is that? Oh. Jesus for Matthew was the crucified Messiah. But you won't accept that because you arbitrarily pick and choose your points. You go you there, you go you there, Paul. Then address the points. You go you there, Paul. See, so you, so you want a yes man. You want someone that will agree with you. I want someone who's a pleasant person and not, Paul, and not like you. I, I, I'm not agreeing with him, by the way. I'm, I'm trying to get to the bottom Paul, of this argument. I, have always been I, I don't agree. I, I believe that the, the four Gospels. They're, 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 well, they're all att attestations, and these all, they, they may be from different sources, but they're all, they're all connected to the same event. So I, I believe that they, they, there's no way they can be seen as separate. Like, separate way. I, I believe they should be all viewed as the same, as in the same reference. They should be referenced in the same way. That's what I believe. Okay, that, that, that's, that's a, that is a Christian view because they're part of scripture, and they say they talk about the same person, and therefore they must say the same thing. I believe if you look at one on its own and we ignore the others, or, or we just say, well, we're just going to brush them aside, then that's wrong. No, the, the way well, why is, that, why is, it is, wrong? is, is, well, why is it wrong? It's, it's wrong because, if, if, let's say I take an account or something, let's say I, I do like, there's a criminal, I need to take a criminal statement, I need to take them from each of these, let's say you, him, him, him and him, yeah? four people, I need to take an, a criminal account. You're of criminals happened. by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I need, to, I need to take an a criminal account of what yeah. I, I would then, I would then need to to, to to look how these stories, how these stories correlate to each other to find out which was, so which ones are true. Yeah. So it, these, these are eyewitnesses. The four gospels: uh, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. They're eyewitnesses. So not all eyewitnesses. So, 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 so Ma Ma Matthew and John were disciples. Mark was writing on behalf of Peter, and Luke was writing uh, on behalf of eyewitnesses. Actually, I agree with him. But, but it's even worse than that. Matthew is not an eyewitness account. Uh, it doesn't claim. Be around this account. It's not in the first person. Uh, it's not saying who wrote it either. So I, I, I know Christians believe Matthew was an eyewitness account, but the text itself doesn't claim. But Matthew it. was a tax collector, as we know from Luke. Yeah, but if you, if you read if you read Matthew's gospel, where does it say it was written by Matthew? No. We know this by church no, no, tradition. I, I, I agree with you. I'm not, I'm not, I mean, so, so, so we can't assume it's not his account simply because it's about someone and because he may have been copied from someone else. Indeed, Matthew was copied from someone else from Q, from M, a special source, M, and also Q. It's a source, it's a source that uh, Matthew and Luke used in addition to Mark, but also they had stuff that's unique to Luke and M and stuff unique to Luke and M. That's the scholarly 
symbols or language we're using. So it's not an eyewitness account, it's not read like an eyewitness account. Indeed, it's written in sophisticated Greek that none of the disciples were literate. A tax collector wasn't literate, no? A very low functioning tax collector would not have been literate in Greek, according to the historians. And also, he would have had to read the scepter again. This is, this is a literacy way beyond a low functioning tax collector just collecting money in the tax books. That's not the quick education we would have had. So it's not, it's not an eyewitness well, how, how how you absolutely certain of that? Well, I'm, I'm summarising... Uh, Although you admit he's a tax story, collector. Historians... He would have been educated. Yeah, yeah, but he would not have... Not really. So not really. Not to write a gospel of that colour and good Greek way of quoting from the sector. Right. Let's, let's go back to your own point. Paul, let's go back to your previous point. Paul, let's go back to your previous point. Let's go back to your previous point. Let's go back to your previous point, Paul. No, he wasn't You asked John. He wasn't illiterate. He asked for a pen and paper on his deathbed. Or a pen and parchment. He couldn't write. Anyway, let's go back to your previous point. Let's go back to your previous point. Let's go back to your previous point. John, let's go back to your previous point. Anyway, so the point, the point, 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 point is... Why don't you let me speak? Let me respond. Let me respond. The Gospels are not written by eyewitnesses. They're written by other people. John, let me let me speak to you then, okay? So the point... the point, you chat. The point... Why are you walking away, Paul? Why are you walking away? Why are you walking away from you? <laughs> Up in there, so man. The problem with Paul, yeah. um, he, he says that I'm being nasty, I'm not being very nice to him. Yeah. That's not true. I've tried to uh, befriend him online, we've had discussions, he then blocks me the moment I disagree with him in an argument. Um, I've tried to be pleasant and polite, to create a friendship there to get conversations going, but whenever I disagree with him, he walks off. This is now the third time he's refused to debate me and, and, and walked off. Okay. Now, he the reason why I have a problem with his arbitrary picking and choosing of what scripture he likes, a moment ago he just said we should take Matthew as a whole. But then when Matthew gets to the point where Jesus is crucified and ro uh, raised again, he, w he doesn't believe in that. Okay. He does believe what Matthew says when it agrees with Islamic theology. He said to my friend John, um, you know, John said rightly that we shouldn't take the Gospels separately, we should read them as a whole and see what all of the uh, uh, accounts are saying. He says, well, why is it wrong to throw out the rest of them and just stick with Matthew? It's wrong for the same reason that it's wrong to arbitrarily pick and choose within Matthew itself. Because he says, I agree with Matthew here, but I don't agree with Matthew here. That's arbitrarily picking and choosing what you like and what you don't like. And he also makes a logical fallacy, which when you're talking in the paradigms which we're speaking about in worldviews, he uses the logical fallacy of appealing to authority, which is like saying, these, these scholars say this, Therefore, it's true. That's a logical fallacy. And he couldn't answer it for the second time I brought this up with him now, which is why he walked away. Go on, come to fire! At the end of the day, you know, I have, I've always been of the opinion that the, the, the historical Gospels, they, they were multiple attestations of one event. And that, that's not going to change. I don't believe picking and choosing what, which, which scripture to follow and which to, to not follow is going to change the fact that the, 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 the historical, the, 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 the historicity of Jesus is multiply attested by four authors. Whether they are who they say they are is irrelevant. Thank you, Captain.